Hi, and welcome to The Freeman Show. Today, I am so honored and privileged to have one of my closest friends. Um, he's been a mentor. He's helped me so much, such a beautiful human being. Um, his name is Anthony Wade, but I know him as Dr. Voice, or simply as Doc. You gotta check this guy out. Dr. Voice. Hey, Doc, how you doing? How you doing? Nice to see you, Les. Good to see you again. So, in terms of voice coaching, right, and the concept of voice, I personally think, in society is underrated or understated. No one really goes out there to get a voice coach as much, unless they're learning to sing, for example. But what you taught me, which I didn't realize at the time, is how to really be connected to me through voice. Mm. Can we talk about that? Yeah. To start off with? Most people in life do not connect to who they really are. Yeah. In the moment. And the reason this is happening because they don't know how to. How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you connect to who you really are? Mm -hmm. uh, when you don't know who you really are. Now here's an interesting it's thought. It's a paradox. So who are you? And when I ask you that question, who are you? It's, it's easy to say something like, oh, I'm a trainer, I'm a presenter. That's O'Freeman. I'm, I'm Freeman. Freeman. Right. You're none of those. You're none of those at all. Mm -hmm. Who you really are is sitting inside you, behind the eyes, looking out of these eyes, mm -hmm. and it's called you. Right. You. You. It's called you. And as you sit here... Looking out of these eyes, there's an incredible thing going on we're not conscious of. And that's called the life force itself. The breathing, the, the body moving, everything. The blood flowing around the body, everything. In its existence. In its existence. Something's keeping us alive. Right. It's a phenomenon. It's a remarkable, it's it a is, miracle. It Look, is. you're not plugged into the wall, but you're sitting here. It doesn't matter what you call it. We are alive, aren't we? animation. Yes. So, are you alive? Are you in a body? That's the first question you ask. And yes, I am. There's no religion in the world you need. There's no belief system in the world you need to, to say you're in a body. Right, right. You're here. You're present. What gives you that feeling of presence and what gives you that experience inside you is a vibration. Mm. And that vibration can only be felt and is felt when we use it consciously. Right. Not being aware of it, just using it also. Most people are not aware of it. Most people are aware of only what they're thinking. Yes. Most, most people are aware of what, oh, well, I'm going to go down the road in a minute, I'm going to buy, buy this and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to be there and oh, well, I've got to go and see something. I've got to, and the thinking process is going and going and going. However, there is something inside you which is not a part of that thought process which is attached to your sound mm. it's attached to your larynx it's attached to your cerebral cortex at the back of the brain it's attached to your whole entire being and it's your breathing mechanism that makes voice work right right so when you're not conscious of your voice you're not conscious of the truest part in you the true nature the true nature of who you are you're actually just conscious of your thoughts you're just conscious of thinking. You're just conscious of what it is you want or where you're going and what you're doing. And everybody's living in that world. Right, and they think that's them. And they think that's who they are. That's why we get self-conscious. That's why we go red. Right. That's why we get embarrassed. That's why we feel shame, maybe. Yes, oh dear, you know, because you're, you're, you're not being with who you really are. Who you really are is free. Who you really are doesn't judge. Who you really are doesn't get emotional. Mm -hmm. Who you really are loves life right. who you really are is so amazing inside who you really are but yourself There's judges no criticizes gets emotional gets angry gets freaked out there's part in your the self right. but the who you really are doesn't it's always safe it's always sitting there watching quietly so if I was to get you to do something now, and oh, well, we could do this, anybody could do this, it's a little tricky, you can do it at home. So everyone can use this? Yeah, everybody uses. this. Try this out. If I ask you to use the word me, and just to feel the word me, not think it, feel it. And how would you feel it? You feel it by saying it, by 
by your chest vibrating. Now, if you go, ah, if everybody can do that now. Go, ah, ah, you feel that? Feel Lazo? Ah, you can feel your chest vibrates. Now, it's vibrating because you're pushing air more predominantly up the the, the, the larynx, uh. right? Ah, you sound a bit like, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone, but do it, go on. Uh. Sylvester Stallone, everybody, look at that. <laughs> hey, John. It seems this way, he's got the muscles as well to go with it. He's got the muscles to go with it. Mickey loves it. <laughs> All the girls love this, don't they? So your larynx is pushing air, right? And air goes over the vocal cords, Mm-hmm. And the vocal cords vibrate. Right. And that's what makes sound. They're actually physically vibrating. Yes. And it, once it connects, that's where you have They vibrate sound. 500 times per second. So fast. They're so fast. Right. And the different pitches make it vibrate at different frequencies. Mm-hmm. If, if I went, uh, 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 it's vibrating about 500, but if I went, uh, right? Right, right? That's right. vibrating at about 1,000. Oh. Super fast. Cause, yeah, because it's... it's really shimmering fast mm-hmm. and this is air going over the vocal cord so what happens that when you decide to be with you inside you i.e. your breathing mechanism and you go ah like I'm asking you to do now ah uh-huh. and you say the word me just say the word me here we go me, me. right now, I want you to say it again long deliberate and relax. So the, feel it vibrating the, in the chest. I don't want you to think it. I want you to feel it. Me. Me. Yeah. Now keep doing that until you really feel it. Me. Now it's almost like hypnotherapy in a way because what you're going to do, you're going to start to feel that. Me. 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 Keep saying it, everyone. Everyone keeps saying it. Me. Me. Now when you feel that. Me. Me. Yeah, I thought the more. Right. Now, just feel it one more time, softer, even softer and warmer. Me. Right. As you feel that, can you feel how good that feels? That felt warm. That Does felt, it feel warm? In a sense, that it felt like compassion. It felt warm. Warm. Mm. Sincere. Right. Real. Yeah. Because it's me. Right. You're feeling a presence. You're in the moment. Me. You're not in the future. You're not anywhere else. You're busy being Ooh, with the vibration right. of air going up the larynx and making you vibrate me. And you're hearing yourself say, me. The me in you doesn't judge. The me in you doesn't get confused. The me in you doesn't freak out. The me in mm-hmm. you doesn't get emotional. Right, right, the right. me in you is pure. The me in you is untouched. The self judges criticizes the self the thinking process analytical it loses the feeling the touch the experience of the me in you right now here's the deal what's the deal it's the me in you that sings the me in you that sings it's the me in you that sings right right okay so when susan boyle got up to sing in front of those millions of people she come from the me in her and she stopped the world and sold eight million records because the me in her was so there. You felt her. She felt that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it was extraordinary to watch this to come out of this unusual looking lady. Yeah, very You cool. know, it was like extraordinary. Expect- and everybody was like, whoa. Where did that come from? Yeah, because she was with herself, mm-hmm. with the deepest part in her when she sang. Now, most singers, when they are with that place when they sing, most musicians, when they're in that place when they do music, it becomes more real it becomes more connected you become feeling what you're doing experiencing what you're doing rather than oh I've got to work this out oh I've got to be like this oh I've got to be like that there's something phony about that there's something that's not authentic enough exactly you can tell exactly so to actually experience that experience of you feeling when you speak Mm -hmm. rather than oh what am I going to say next see right now you're asking me questions and it's very delightful and I'm very pleased to be here you're doing this but I'm sitting here now and I have no idea what you're going to ask me next and at the same time my my brain is like a baby I don't have anything going on in my thinking I don't have anything going on in what I should say to you or how I should be I'm just feeling just going with yeah I'm feeling good sitting in this body because I know my larynx my voice is with me. The sound I make now Mm -hmm. is coming from me. And that's what's real. That's real. So what I say 
If I say it with intent and I have a message, if I want to give a message across... And what do you do? And what, and what anybody wants to bring, yeah, in whatever your subject is in life, if you're with who you really are when you do that, oh my God, that affects change. Big change. Why is that? Is that because of presence? Is that because... They... The presence. Right. Bold presence. It's called... Bold enthusiasm bold comes enthusiasm. to you. When you have bold enthusiasm... It's contagious. When that, yeah, it's contagious. People love hearing people that are talking about something they're very excited about, mm. passionate about. The word passion. You know, passion doesn't come wrapped in monotone. No. Passion doesn't come wrapped in feeling, you know, oh, I'm, oh, I'm not... But just information giving. And yeah. this is one of the biggest problems with anybody that's trying to get their message out there in the world, that they come from a point of message information. Oh, this information is good or this information is good yeah and the information might be relevant and very powerful but, but how it's but said how you put it across right is, two different messages oh, you can just add this other creme de la creme on it that people go oh my god this is so easy to and so palatable right, right, to right. accept and hear and listen to I love hearing this can you give me an example like giving information that's not really say saying anything but it's delivered in a way that has yeah, that okay. I'll, I'll give an example of the story at one time when I gave yeah. a talk. When I gave a talk on um, a, uh, uh, in front of the Dickens world with all the actors. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was come across, it was quite extraordinary because I stood there and I started to use voice energy. Right. Now, what's voice energy? Voice energy is being conscious of your sound as I am now. You're vibrating right now. I'm yeah. vibrating. You can feel the voice yeah. coming through me. Now, here's the thing. What I'm doing as I talk to you, I'm being very conscious of pitch. Because I go up like that. Mm -hmm. And I come down too to conclude. Right, so right. I'm moving my voice in pitch around. And you're bringing it down and grounding there, it. And grounding it down. This is pitch. This is called the elements. Right. And I remember at one time been in front of the Philharmonia Orchestra conducting it yeah. and um, I was actually a musical director at this point and I sat there and I had no idea I don't know how to uh, orchestrate or have an orchestra in front of me I had no idea what I, I was never doing done it before. never done it before in my life right. there was a big mixing desk in front of me and what did I do I went to the seven elements of music and all I did was call out uh, pitch of the violins can you uh, bring that down a bit, you know, it's a bit sharp. Right, right. The dynamics of the French horns. And, I was, and by the time I went through all the elements of what music is, I'd controlled this whole new orchestra. And people wow. come up and say, oh my God, how did you do this? I don't know how I did it. Well, I actually did it through the elements. Mm -hmm. Basic elements. So and it's pitch. Pitch, rhythm. Rhythm. Dynamics. Mm -hmm. Pause. Pausing. Silence is very powerful. Right, right. How many times? How many times are you? You see in a silence. Yeah, you it's like said a what? What? I'm not saying much. <laughs> I've said nothing yet. But you're waiting, aren't you? Right. Pause is very powerful. It's anticipation. Yeah. So you've got pitch, rhythm, dynamics. Dynamics is where you go loud and soft. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? I mean, I'm loud about that. And rhythm is speed. Right, right. Going slow and then bringing it down to some point. point. But then you can go on very fast. If you look at your rhythm, you've got a very fast rhythm. At some points, you're amazing because you go, well, that's a good idea. But I'll wait a minute. And you right. say something very quick after, uh -huh. which is interesting because that gives it a dynamic too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what would be better for you is if you put more in the vowels when you do it. Stay and, in a vowel. Yes, stay in a stay vowel. In, in the, the vowel, vowels. which is articulation, which mm -hmm. is the six element. So you've got pitch, rhythm, volume, dynamics, and articulation. Articulation. Yeah, and, uh, and rhythm. Did I say rhythm? Did, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically you've got those at your armory. So yeah. I'm standing in front of this audience, and I said, some of you have come a long way. Some of you come from by car, some of you come from London. And it's amazing, really, because even though you're sitting here today, and I mean this in a very strange way, because if you look, 
And I just go, I'm waffling. Right, right, right. I didn't know what I was going to say. I had no idea what I was talking about, right? Because I wasn't saying anything. You weren't saying anything. But I went for eight minutes and they clapped. <laughs> <laughs> and when they clapped, and they, I said, can anybody tell me what I said? And this bloke in the front row, you know, talking about life? And I said, no, I didn't say anything. I didn't inform you of anything. Right. I did not give you any content at all. Right, right. And yet you were mesmerised. Why? Because I was with me in the elements. Mm -hmm. And when they understood they that... they felt that energy. Yeah, they could feel that. And then and they're all sitting there. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a lot of people around. I was like, oh, I'm going to give a thousand pound a minute. And the point is, what I would love to do right now is give this girl over here 20 pound. And I took 20 pound out of my pocket. She oh, yes, please. And she wanted She's 20 excited, pound. Yeah, yeah, all excited, wanted 20 pound. I was gonna give her the 20 pound. Did anybody see what happened there? And this young guy in the front, pretty smart, he said, yeah, he said, you didn't, you said to her that you wanted to give her a thousand pound in a minute, mm -hmm. but you didn't use the elements. You didn't use any animation, just nothing. Information. You weren't with what you said. You just said it like a bit of information. And she didn't get it. But when you said it with the elements, you're going to give her £20. She wanted the £20. Wow. She missed out on the £1,000. Right. Hello, wake up. How incredible is our sound with the elements, being in the presence of yourself, feeling good, is going to have such a, a powerful impact Massively. with your message. Your message. Or just general communication. General communication. I, mean, I used to do it with my son. Um, I used to say, Jack, turn the lights off if you're to go with him. And he lived with me. <laughs> and, uh, and the lights were on every night I come home. It didn't matter what I said, they were yeah. still on. But the day I used voice energy, I started to practice voice energy. And I said, right. <clears throat> Jack, <laughs> turn the lights out before you go to school. Yeah? What the... They were all out that was when I get home. Effective Why? communication. Why? Because effective communication, effective being in the moment, connecting with someone, mm -hmm. eye contact, vocal contact, well, right. energy contact, in uplifting, feeling good. You know, I work with children um, one day a week, sometimes two days a week in a prison. Right. Uh, Volunteer. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, I, it's a job. That's a job I do. Yeah. And, and what I do, I bring about a change in a way where wow. uh, to be in a situation like that, I have to be with me. I have to be with the me in me. Otherwise, I, I cannot. You can't connect no, with them. No, you right. can't connect with them. And you, to connect with anybody, because, you know, some, some of the worst children in the country okay. uh, are suffering very badly. And, you can't, yeah. and, and to communicate directly with people, you have to connect with yourself first. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the most important message that I'm trying to give out to this world, really, right. through my programs, through everything I do, uh, through what I do in my, I call my immersion days, where I take a person and totally transform them for the day, which I think you, yeah, it was you attended. Phenomenal. <laughs> And, it was a um, life-changing experience. Yeah, so because there's a lot of things that go on in that day, mm. which are not just about the voice. It's about the blocks that you hold. The limiting because beliefs. We all have limiting blocks and beliefs because your voice, uh, just like our friend earlier who spoke, mm. uh, uh, Dominic Knight, your voice, your inner voice is connected to your outer, outer voice. voice yeah. So what happens when you start being conscious of your outer voice? you will be able to instruct change. a change to the inner voice. You could be the inner coach. Yes. So you become your own inner coach. You, but the way you say things, no. I'm always talking to myself. I'm always talking. Come on. It's the best place to get advice. Yeah, best place to get advice. It's, it's with who you really are. <laughs> right, come right. on, Anthony. Now, come on. That's why, you know, I like living alone. Because, <laughs> oh, come on now. You've got to really to make, get on with this, you know. Yes, yes, yes. And bring yourself round. Because what's the point in thinking the negative thoughts, like we were talking about uh, with Dominant Knight, that the negativity and, the, and, and repeating patterns in your think, thinking, mm -hmm. it's just going to give you more of the same. Yeah, especially these negative predetermined patterns of behavior that you're just doing over and over again. And you know it's bad for you, but you're not listening to the voice. Exactly. And you're not listening. So if you're open, if your ears are open, mm -hmm. and this is the key, the ears are the key. 
What are you listening to when you speak? How attuned are you to you when you speak? Yeah. Are you feeling what you're saying? And one of the things I gave this uh, group of people in an occupational therapist, they got up and I asked this group of ladies who look after children between the ages of five and nine, and I asked them the question, do you get your children to stand up and speak out loud? I went, no. I said, you know what you've just done? You've just stopped someone becoming a leader. You've just stopped someone becoming more animated mm -hmm. in themselves. Because when you get a child between the ages of five and nine, or when they can just about read, and they're right, reading right, right. out loud, and they're able to stand up and read out loud with a feeling of confidence and from their breath, and they, the larynx is connected to the cerebral cortex at the back. Right. It picks it up. And instilled in the cerebral cortex in the brain, that child, when that larynx is vibrating with its strength and it's seeing itself do this to all these people, has a confidence deliberated and put into them for the rest of their life. Right, so. And they become fearless when speaking in public speaking. Yeah. They become fearless when they want to talk to people. They become more fearless. And so what you're doing, you're stopping, you're stopping that, that process if you don't encourage that in a child. Now, fortunately, a lot of people didn't do that, and that's where I get my business from. Right. Just now, <laughs> I have Good chairman of come, hello, talk like this, you know, and I'm like, he's given a seminar to 500 people, and no one has understood a word he's saying. What are you saying, right? You know, it's, I mean, it's about being you. It's about being with your You know, it's about being with your message. And if you can't be with your message, here it is. You cannot be with your message if you're not with yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's listening. One of the biggest things. Feeling. Feeling. The sound. Being with the nature. God gave you this life, nature, whatever you want to call it, uh, whatever way you want to describe it. You've been given a gift of life. And in this gift of life, you have the elements mm -hmm. that runs music, that runs your body, that runs art, that runs everything. Everything's got its element. And right. if you're not aware of the elements or the root of these things, then you cannot master these things. Talking about mastering these things, like we just said earlier, the kids who um, were told not to read out loud. Now, the story, personal story for me, I couldn't read till I was about 15, 16, dyslexic. And what I used to do was get, when I decided, okay, fuck it, I'm gonna really learn to read, I would read out loud. And when I read out loud, I wasn't distracted because a part of the sex is like ADD, your mind wanders off. Yeah. So when I was reading, I heard my voice and then I learned so much faster just by reading out loud in a simple way. But you said there was, there's a method to this, there's an actual science in terms of, it actually increases your learning capabilities. Is yes. It toma tomatoes effect? Oh, the tomatoes effect, yes. yeah. Uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Tomatoes is the guy, the French uh, guy that in, uh, he's, he brought about the, um, the program of hearing. He discovered, which is 50 years discovery, that it's the ears which are actually predominant in enabling you to increase your ability to sing beautifully in tune, mm -hmm. uh, enable you to be attuned to yourself more, Long -term it's memory. your hearing and your memory. And that he found that in schools when uh, children were able to listen more and open their ears more clearly, they learnt much more effectively in all other subjects. Yes. That's why they have music in schools. There's, uh, it's not just for the self-expression, it's also because it teaches them. I've, we've, we've proved it in one school I worked at in Greenacre. You, you, you teach the children music and then when they're in the maths or English department, they're 30% they're more focused because they've been sure. listening, they've opened their ears, uh, uh, so they're more apt to open up to listen to more information. Yeah. So, uh, There's a study also with uh, Mozart being played as a young age, kids learn a lot faster other subjects, Yes. just the fact that it's around. That's right, the, the ears mm. are very, I mean, the ears are responsible for 80% of your sensory perception, wow. which controls your body movements and most of the muscles in your body. Right, and balancing too. Yeah. Your ears are responsible for that. So when you attune them and awaken your ears, this is what gives you a fantastic singing ability. People that sing beautifully is because their ear, they're really tuning into their sound, or they've just been lucky enough to tune into it when they were very young. Some children, I get it when I have to do singing lessons. Mm. You have some pupils that come to one of my latest pupils, Sam Smith. Yes, right. He comes to me, very natural voice. Right. Very natural. And you work for him for how long? 
about three years right. on and off, you know, and we produced some music together. And, um, you know, and so amazing what was happening with Sam is he had very natural ears. Uh, so he would hear something and be able to do it very quickly. Mm -hmm. And he was able to do that for such a young age. Right. So what can you teach him? He, he's already got, well, you, you just sharpen that up. Right, polish by, up. Yeah, by techniques, by using the voice and getting him to sing higher notes, which he couldn't do and he started to do after a period of time, you know, from working different techniques, yeah, which, yeah. Are, which is what the voice is all about. You have to wake the voice up that's the cool to, part. in order to feel it. Right, that's the cool part. Because I remember when I first did uh, some voice coaching through you and it's increasing pathways, like the, that you feel there's access to different notes, different pitch, and it's, it's humbling. It's a humbling feeling. It is. Um, I mean, you can do this now. Here we are. Another technique for you. Try at this home, one. try this. You're going to wake your neighbours up. You're going to freak them all out. It doesn't it, matter. Um, if you do this technique, this is the whole spectrum of your voice. It's where you take it from the root to the highest note. Mm -hmm. Now, what am I doing here? If you want to sing a note and you want to sing very high, let's say yeah. we want to go right up the top, you won't be able to just do that. Yeah. You have a go. But people can't do it. They, all, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, they, they, the voice. they don't know how to do it. You've got to create a pathway of sound first. So it's like the snow. Keep working out. out. Got to warm up. Yeah, it's the snow out the back gate. You get the snow out the way you can find the gate. Mm -hmm. It's the same. And exercises for that reason. And a lot of people, teachers, don't understand this in singing. That you're there to make pathways of sound, mm -hmm. not just a warm up. It's actually making a pathway. pathway. Okay. So this is a fantastic pathway of sound technique which I've discovered over the years, which works very powerfully so if you send it down first you go into hey Adrian hey Adrian yeah you become this man up. there he is Sylvester Stallone and you you go into this space down here like in what we call the dumb earth we we'll go down in this uh, space yeah uh, everybody do this it's easy all we'll go uh, uh, now watch I want you to keep that sense of it going down to the people at the bottom of the valley and you want to hit them down there so you're going to go uh, uh, but as you do this uh, you all right, mate? Yeah. Oh, you're That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was his belly. Um, as you send the sound down, I want you to go up in pitch. Listen to me okay. first so you get the idea of it. Take it air in through the nose. Uh... That's the full range. So if I That's wanted phenomenal. to <laughs> if it's about five octaves. If I wanted to sing up there, yeah. I wanna know why like a rock voice. Right, yeah. <laughs> You had these rock things. That's, that's your granny technique. Yeah, right? it's, it's a granny technique. Yeah, check out the granny <laughs> technique. Yeah, hello there. Which is the pharynx. So when you make sound, it's a funny sound. Do, do, do the granny voice and then the granny sing. Hello dear, this is granny. Ah, ah, ah. Now, there's no effort in that whatsoever. <laughs> I'll put my leg up and do it. No matter what I do. You can make any sound you like. That's great. Because that's going to the pharynx. Right here. Yeah, right here. it's at the back of the mouth. Now, uh, what you, if you did that at home, you do this exercise every day, not the granny technique, because that takes a bit of specialised work, <laughs> which, uh, you know, it uh, takes time to do that. But to find the pharynx, that is. So but by sending the sound down and finding where your peaks are, uh, until it flips out. Mm -hmm. See where you're going to flip out. Go. Uh, right See it there. flip out? Yeah. You heard it flip out. Flipping out is when it goes to the girly voice. It goes, uh, <laughs> ooh, hello, <laughs> possums. It goes all day, Medna. And so... Uh, what you want to do, you want to keep it in what we call the mixed voice where you send it straight up. Okay. So it stays down. So you've got Super to go, down. yeah, you go. Uh, you're still keeping it down. And if I spoke like that, it's still hard, hard voice. It's not, oh, how no, yeah, yeah, is it? It's that. Uh, uh, see the different voices. Different, it's not a falsetto. It's a real mixed voice, it's called. And so you keeping that down, 
in the valley. Where you go. Uh, Nearly, yeah, just, but it doesn't matter. See, as you keep doing this, five minutes a day, you mm. will make a pathway of sound to a higher voice. I felt like it was travelling up here. Even though I was sending it down, yes. it was like travelling towards... Travelling up there. Yeah, that's yeah. right. This is where it is in your body. Yeah. Now, there's another technique I can give you while you're here. Right, let's do it. Do you want another technique? I want to they want another technique. Yeah, another technique. They want another technique. They want a technique. This is a good one. This is where the, the pharynx makes all the sounds. I, I go into the pharynx when I do the high voice. Right. That's pharynx. Now, it means it's not in the throat. It's not hurting or pushing towards the throat. So it's free. And you can get to it by getting... You're all right. <laughs> so it's all right. No, he keeps doing the funny things. You're gonna get, we're going to learn a lot here today. Anyway, when you go into that space... Right. It's a mini mouse sound. It's actually produced at the back of yeah, the mouth, the isn't it? Yeah, up through the palate and into the to the pharynx. Right. Now the pharynx is incredible because it's the it's the largest resonator in your body. Mm -hmm. It gives it the most sound. Now I'm gonna to talk to you, or I'm gonna to sing to you first okay. with no with normal, right, mouth. And then I'm gonna to sing to you with the pharynx, and you see the difference. Alan, then I looked at you. Oh, you said it's beautiful, I get to it, no matter how hard I try to get through it. Right, now I'm going to sing that again, but with the pharynx. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to imagine, because the pharynx can't move without your imagination. Mm -hmm. So you turn the lips around in your imagination and put the lips on the back of your throat and, and close your mouth. And you're going to be like a ventriloquist. Mm -hmm. And listen to me do it now. <clears throat> Alive, then you looked at me. Oh, you said it's beautiful. I get to it. No matter how hard I try to get to it. Quite like here. Quite like here. <laughs> Quite like here. Right? What am I doing? It's like a ventriloquist. I hardly move my lips. Right. Is that correct? Right, correct. I couldn't see, but yeah. I'm assuming... It was I... like stiff upper lip. Yeah, stiff upper lip. So what I was doing, I was shaping my mouth in my imagination at the back. Like, now we can do that when we're talking. How? Look. How? I do this at bus stops sometimes. <laughs> How are you? All right. And I'm just standing there and people are looking at me and they thought, he didn't say that. Who said that? <laughs> he didn't say that. Who said that? <laughs> oh, not too bad, are you? All right. And I'm just standing there like that. And I'm thinking, How the hell is that? Is there someone in the room? In the room? On the street? <laughs> yeah, on the you? street, yeah. They don't know they think it was someone else. Because they're looking at me with my shirt and tie on, you know. But basically, by you using the pharynx inside and imagine a vowel go hello hello right i i love yeah it's a different it's a weird sound yeah, at right, the top right, isn't it? Yeah. not pleasant but you start to develop that Rain. pathway so i uh so when you're talking if i'm in front of an audience how many you see i used it there on, and then. when will we ever you see, I'm using mm -hmm. it at certain times, that pharynx. Right, right. Look who we are. You know, it's like, mm, you know, they're like little punches towards the back of the mouth, which gives you uh, a sound, vibrational quality and a punch. Right. And it's very useful when you've got a big audience and you just want to pull them into your, a them. particular thing at that moment. Right. Yes. It's all about captivation. It's all about mesmerisation. It's all about bringing ball into the message, like I did with the guys at, uh, you know, in, in, the Dickson. in the Dickens world, where they were just sitting there and that they, they believed they were entertained. They thought they got some information. They didn't get anything out of me. They're going to experience. That's, That's the, the point. Difference. It's experiential. What I'm sharing with you is totally experiential. Yeah. How to be the experience of who you are while you communicate. Mm -hmm. That is is a force to be reckoned with. And that's, that, that's what's lovely about it. And, and, and there comes another story where uh, Anthony Robbins told me one time, I must share this story. Have we got time for this? Oh yeah, we do, plenty of time, um, 
where he was, uh, he was asked to go and get Gorbachev in his aeroplane to bring him over to the White House. Gorbachev, the guy yeah. with the... Uh, yeah, Gorbachev. At a time when he was... Uh, yeah, the president of the uh, Russia. USSR. And this is, yeah, USSR. And this is when they were actually uh, had a problem with the... The Cold War. The, the Cold War, yeah. They wanted to get rid of the nuclear warheads. It was dark times. It wasn't happening. Mm. And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, Robbins wanted to get across, because he wanted to hear the story, because the... They disarmed the nuclear warheads and he wanted to know what the real truth was. Mm -hmm. How did this happen? So he sat with Gorbachev for hours on the plane on the way back trying to ask him how did he, you know, he took him in his own plane to try and bring him back to the summit to have a meeting with uh, Reagan. And in the end, Gorbachev gave in. He said, OK, I'll tell you the real story. You want the real story? There's a real story. They were sitting in the White House, President Reagan with Gorbachev, and he sat there and they got heated discussion and it wasn't pleasant and apparently uh, Reagan got upset, uh, Gorbachev got upset, he said, right, you American all the same and it's like, there's no way they're going to sign an agreement yeah, to yeah, get yeah. rid it's of the nuclear warheads. Clashing. Two egos crashing, two powerful people on the planet have a control over the, the planet, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Reagan gets up all of a sudden and walks out and slams the door and Gorbachev sat there, he was telling Robbins the story. Bloody America! Germany was really angry. How dare he go out? And all of a sudden he heard knock on the door. Come in. Regan walks in. Hi, my name's Ronald. Could we start again, please? Mm -hmm. And Gorbachev laughed. And when they both laughed, remember that saying, the shortest distance between two people is laughter. Laughter, yeah, I agree. When they both laughed, they agreed. And they signed the, the nuclear warheads. Wow. And it saved the planet right, from right. World War Three. That's how fickle and how powerful being who you yeah. really are is about. Being in your voice. Being, being in your intent, being in your sound, being in your what it is you want to be with. It's very powerful. The repercussions you have in business, in life, and across the board. What's ph phenomenal, what you're saying is, it has such a huge impact, it's so simple. Yes, right? so it's so simple. But yet, it, like, the simple things are usually the hardest things to acquire, but not necessarily through your teachings and your techniques. What I'm interested, uh, Doc, is how do you get to become you? What was like some of your stories? Because it's not something you just kind of fall into. No, well, I... Maybe did. Um, what it was for me, I always wanted to be a singer. And yeah. uh, I mean, I, you, 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 you want to make music for movies and orchestra? Yeah, that's... yeah, I've always been involved in music. What it was, when I was 17, I immigrated to Australia on the £10 assisted passage. Crikey. Uh, looking for God in 1969, mm -hmm. thinking, God is out there, where are you, God? Right, you right. know, and right. of course, I've read the Bhagavad Gavita, the Koran, the Ramayana, the Bible, every scripture you could ever right, possibly right. think of. I became a, a, a Mormon, a Methodist, a Protestant, Protestant uh, all of them. I forget all the names I've become. <laughs> <laughs> so I was all the, I was all these denominations. Yeah, a world called T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Every week I had a different garment on. You want to see me with a little cap on and everything? I did the Jewish thing. No, I didn't. But basically, I, I, I was doing. You were searching, for searching, time. searching. And it wasn't <coughs> until I sat down and I realised, and it was a guy in a guy in a, in a, I sat down with a bottle of whiskey at twenty two and decided I want to give up. I'd had enough of life. I you thought, at twenty two. Yeah, twenty two. Like... I thought this is it. No more. I've, I've, it doesn't exist. There's no such thing as God. There's no such thing as love in this life. There's no, no, no one want. What am I here for? Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there with a bottle of whiskey, and a guy come up to me, and he went, "Yeah, yeah, mate, no worries." He went, "Don't you know, God is within you. No worries." And walked off. <laughs> At that point, I thought, "What? Within me?" I then walked off and then I went into town and I saw these people saying, go within, be with meditation, with a little bar banner. You right, know? Right, right. I followed him into this room, sat down, heard this guy talking and I realised actually I've got to learn to go within. So for two years I studied in this, with these people to find out how to go within and what it means. Right, right. And it wasn't until one day this Indian came up and he said, come tomorrow and I will show you. I went, oh good, next day. Come tomorrow, and, I, and every day he did this for two years, come what? tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, when am I going to know this thing? And it was on the, about two years later, went, come tomorrow, wear loose clothes. I thought, oh, this is my day. It's going to happen yeah. now. So I sat down, of course I was so open and so wanted to know what this thing was. And I closed my eyes and I went inside and for the first time in my life I shut the hell up. 
I actually disappeared into a space inside myself, which was not the mind, not the body, mm -hmm. but something else going on inside me. And it was included in my breathing apparatus. And then I realized it's through my breathing apparatus, most of the things are happening, because I'll tell you now, not one of you out there will be doing anything unless you were breathing. Hello? You've got to be breathing first. And this directed me to the breath, which then I realized the breath is what makes the voice work. Mm. And so what, also what makes the body work. So then I started to do singing, and I started to work with my voice and the breath and more. And, and then I joined an ashram, and I meditated eight hours a day for 10 years of my life. Oh, wow. So I got to know who I am. I got to know what that breathing apparatus was. I got to know what this place was inside a me. Deep appreciation. So very deep appreciation. And to the point where now I do feel very at home in that place. Mm -hmm. And most of the work that I do, I try to come from that. The mind, the thinking, all these other things are always there to distract us. And, right, they, right. and they do. Yeah. And like most of us, like we were saying, you can't be 100% of the time and 100% of the thing that you want. Distractions come. But basically, through that, I then got into music. I, then, I was in the Bee Gees backing band. You were the Bee Gees? I, yeah, I met Mungo Jerry. Who, who, it was Mungo Jerry who said to me, why don't you take up music? In the summertime. Yeah, so I took up music, Beautiful. played the guitar, learned all the chords off of the guitar over a period of two years. Then I met up with the Bee Gees drummer and I joined and I worked, got on stage with the Bee Gees at the Subiaca Oval. 30 3,000 people going, ah. and I come off stage thinking, what the hell's going on? I couldn't <laughs> believe this. You know? yeah. And then after that, I then still continue to write music and come back to England. And I started to write music for film and television and was teaching singing all the time. I've been mm -hmm. teaching singing since I was 17. So I learnt tech, because I couldn't sing I to mean, save my a, life. You had a product called The Fastest uh, Singing Thing. The Fastest Singing Programme program in the World. In the world yeah, yeah. It's, it's my book, yeah. It took me five years to develop and uh, it's still sitting on the shelf. <laughs> I'm waiting to market it, but... It, it, There's people out here going to want it. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, it's, it's a great book because it really gets you in there quick on learning how to sing. Uh, but basically, I, I've put techniques and methods in there that because I couldn't sing to save my life. And I realised, what is it that makes a person sing? And it's just understanding what to do. The elements. So, yeah, the elements, so many things. Yeah. Uh, exercises, thing, and then you'll find that you've got this amazing voice. I've taken people who cannot sing a note yeah, I've seen and got them singing you on beyond Sky, the voice. Uh, you had like two families. Yes, uh, on Sky Television. Yeah. They were like dysfunctional families and none of them can sing for shit. Like, no. terrible, terrible. And then you got them, hey, you, there was that conflict within each other? There were some issues? Yeah. So they, you got the singing to kind of unite them. Like, yeah. It was their common enemy in a, in a, in a yeah. peaceful, loving way. That's well. right. You see but, a bit of that on YouTube, by the way, on Dr. Voice. If you go on YouTube and put Dr. Voice, you'll see that a bit of the first part of that program, right. eight minutes. So t two families, they hated each other's guts. Yeah. And uh, this family didn't want to talk to this family. This guy wanted to marry the girl out of this family, so there's never going to be a wedding. <laughs> so what I did, they brought me in Sky TV and asked me, would I would like to be able to change these people? Could I do it through singing? Mm. I said, yeah. I went in, weren't just singing though. It was like a lot of the other right. techniques of life coaching, thought processes, blocks. I had to remove all their blocks. I had to chase a girl up the high street, stop her from doing silly things. I had to go around their houses to try and pull them out of their houses in the morning because they didn't want to come filming. Yeah. It was all sorts of things. It took 12 hours a day. Big kerfuffle. Big kerfuffle. And in the end, um, uh, we, we got them going and they got married on the show. And uh, so it was an incredible, happy story, happy ending. Um, but there's something to it, like there's something towards singing and unite people. Like singing in general unites people. Like, yeah, it's beautiful. Just like laughter does. Yes. it's one of those two. It's things. one of those things. Yeah. yeah, because what it is, it is you connecting to you. So when you're connected to you, you don't have any judgment. You lose yourself. You lose yourself. Right. So you, when you go, ah, da 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 da, I'm just da di di da ing, da di da. Go on, do a da di da with me. Da di da da. There's a glass missing here. Make some lights. But but I saw recently Richard Harris and Peter O'Toole on YouTube. Amazing, and they're singing away. It's just singing away together. Why? In going back in memories of the old time right. when they sang mm -hmm. together, and you know, and they sing in the trenches. Why? Because it brought the spirit oh, up. Right. When you sing, 
Your happiness quotient, listen to this, your happiness quotient goes up to 25 to 30% when you use your voice with your breath. And it's like, and it's like changing your state. It's yeah. a way of changing your state. Yeah, so Another way of down, change, yeah. Now it's like singing. Or when you go keep fit. When you go running on a running machine, you know, being the master of this yourself, no, right. that when you do something physical, it changes your state immediately. Yeah. Singing has the same powerful effect. Wow. And so if people want to get hold of you, Doc, from what you do, like coaching-wise, seminars, your products, what's the best yeah. way to get hold of you? Private teaching for singing. Um, I've got a website, www.doctorvoice.tv, D-R-V-O-I-C-E. Dot TV. There's my website. Right. Uh, there's information and products on there and services that I offer. And can they add you on Facebook? Twitter? They can add me on Facebook, Twitter me, right. Blitter me, <laughs> anything you want with me. I'm Instagram, not, yeah. yeah just, you know, pick him out of two on a day. Nice drink. I have a message, and uh, I would love to be able to awaken that in every human being. It's mm. just be a beautiful thing to watch. I know you've awakened that in me, first of all, and I want to say thank you. Doc, you're a wonderful, beautiful human being. Um, I just want to show you your hand. You're, you're beautiful. Lovely. Thank you. It's a joy to be with you, my friend. Thank you. Joy to be with you. Thank you.